What's up guys, Shotbog here, and today we're going to be delving into exactly what these chaps are doing here, or rather why they're doing it, as I'm sure you'll have no doubt seen this sort of thing before firsthand for yourselves. Though you are more likely to see groups of players taking part in this ritual of sorts during one of Sibsoft's double experience and subsequently double advancement on skills weekend, it's not totally unheard of to see something like this happen on a regular day to day basis also, only on a much smaller scale, as it is much more beneficial to do so during a double weekend. These players here, as well as myself, are currently training at their magic level, which basically just boils down to standing idly at any given magic shop NPC in town for hours at a time, spamming as many mana potions as you can afford to, all the while using a multitude of different spells to expend said gained mana. Boosting your character's magic level, and as such making yourself essentially stronger in exchange for money. This method is a little bit of a pay to win feature if I'm honest, and has given mages a clear advantage when it comes to starting new characters. While a fresh paladin or knight straight out of dawn would usually have to be put into an offline trainer for a few days before reaching a semi-decent skill level. A mage, if they have some disposable money, can bypass the waiting period and have a character with a magic level of 50 and upwards in just a few short hours at the expense of a few hundred k being spent. Though I just want to say that this is in no way something you absolutely must do, as offline training will still give you the same results but only in a much longer time frame. A mage's main skill is its magic level and it advances from the use of this game's magic resource known as mana. It is highly beneficial to be constantly regaining and expending said mana as much as possible while your character is online to continually be advancing to that next magic level, because at higher levels in this skill, the mana expense needed will be considerably larger. Having a higher level in this skill will determine both your damage output when using either instant spells like energy wave or offensive runes like great fireballs and also how much health is replenished when using healing spells such as intense healing so in short the higher the skill level the more battle effective your character will become let's look at an example of the power difference between a newly created noob chart and one that skills have been trained to above magic level 60. each character of the same level while both using energy strike against the scarab found in the anchorman desert as you can see here for yourselves the two are drastically leagues apart from one another one is basically dobby the house Self, while the second, in comparison, is a more Gandalf the Grey level of power, further proving why doing this is beneficial to your character. So now that we've established why, it's time to talk about the where and how. Firstly, to maximise the regeneration of your mana, ideally you want to have hit up the daily reward shrine six times to attain the double mana regeneration. Though this isn't required by any means, it is however highly suggested, as every little bit of extra mana you can get for free will help bring the overall cost of this experience down. Secondly, you want to find yourself a magic supply shop that also doubles as a resting zone. Shops in cities like Fias and Edron just won't cut it, though while the shop in Anchorman is a protection zone, it doesn't offer the resting zone perk that we are after. The place I personally like the most when training my magic level is above the depot in Port Hope. It has everything you need, the NPC, the resting zone, and also has a nice view, but trust me, after doing this for an hour or two you'll soon tire from the assortment of jungle themed pixels, I can guarantee. Finally, it's now time for the how, my boys. In short, to train your magic level, you want to be expending the entirety of your mana gained from the pot that you used in that single turn repeatedly, so that your mana pool stays as empty as possible. Otherwise, if you don't and you aren't paying attention, your mana pool will cap out and you start to essentially waste money. To keep this in check, you want to be using spells that's usage requirement costs more than that of what the potion you use will give out each turn. Remember, the higher level you are, the better potions you will have access to, the quicker this process will go. The most common spell to use when training your magic level would be invisibility, which costs 440 mana. You get access to this at level 35 and has a 2 second cooldown, which is perfect when using great mana potions, but if you really want to speed things up and move that progression bar along faster, use ultimate mana potions at level 130 while casting a combination of invisibility and ultimate healing, as they don't share a cooldown timer. This will help burn all your excess mana in no time, but if you do end up with a surplus, you can always start creating either sudden death runes for sorcerers or paralyzed runes for druids to keep things running smoothly. In addition, if you have the daily reward shrine buff from the seventh day, you'll also start to regain soul points while in the resting zone, allowing you to create runes indefinitely as you regain four soul points per minute while stood there. Now for the tricky part of making this process as semi-AFK as possible while still being legal and not resulting in your character being banned. If you bind your preferred spell and pot hotkeys next to one another and find something weighted from around your house to keep the two keys pressed down, your character will sit and cast to its heart's content. 
while only needing you to return every now and then to purchase more parts. So the more capacity that your character has, the more time away you'll get before needing to return to your computer. And this is an advantage that everybody will have access to. Though, if you're thinking of creating a macro to do this, please note that the use of macros is against the game's policy and guidelines, and may result in character deletion, so you know, maybe just don't chance it. But in my opinion, since the implementation of Battle Eyes, Sipsoft really have started to crack down on the rules, so it's not really worth the risk. But to my knowledge, using weighted objects will not result in a ban, but as a disclaimer, use this part of my guide at your own discretion. I myself, when training, simply sit with my fingers on the hotkeys while I watch a film on my second monitor to pass the time, and also save my brain from turning to mush. And with that said, I think we've covered everything that I wanted to in this video. Hopefully you found all of this informative and helpful. If you have any of your own suggestions, do feel free to hit up the comment section with them, as I would love to hear your own unique ways of boosting your magic levels. So until next time guys, take care of yourselves, and I'll be back with another video real soon.